Welcome to the MWBE Champions Awards Gala. Tonight, we come together in celebration of the many wins made by New York State's diverse business community, from minority and women-owned businesses who have worked tirelessly to continue to grow despite adversity, to partners of the MWBE program who are a testament to the importance of advocacy and community support. As a global pandemic continues to persist, we've all learned the importance of remaining connected and building vital relationships that keep us thriving through these dark times. But there is light in the darkness, and through innovation, creativity, and ingenuity, we have learned how to push forward, have we not? Yes, it's a new day. With this year's theme of Innovating Forward, we hope to highlight the numerous ways that individuals across the state have done just that, used innovation in order to continue moving forward, building up their communities, and leaving behind a legacy of success. Tonight's awards will spotlight individuals and organizations alike who answered the call to action from the women-owned garment and apparel business that took action when the pandemic began, manufacturing PPE for frontline workers, all while helping to reduce dependency on overseas supply chains, to the New York State agencies and staff who worked tirelessly to increase MWBE utilization and deliver goods and services across this great state. From the New York State Senator who has dedicated her life to and work to serving her community and advocating for the removal of barriers to MWBEs, creating a more inclusive economy, to the Division of Minority and Women-Owned Businesses Development, 10 regional offices who have done astounding work for the MWBEs in their regions. Let's just give that a round of applause. 10 offices. And we salute you and many, many more who are the lifeblood of New York State's economy. Without you, there would be no us. So thank you so much. So to continue in our celebration of the champions across the great state of New York, it is with my greatest honor that I get to introduce our host for the 11th annual New York State MWBE Forum, Governor Kathy Hochul. Well, that was beautiful. Can you do that again? <laughs> Oh, thank you, everyone. It is so great to be here in person. Sorry, live stream people. We know there's a lot of you out there, but this is where the action is tonight. Catch you next year in person, hopefully. So I am so honored to be here, first of all, as your governor, and delighted to be part of the 11th annual celebration of MWBEs. I, as lieutenant governor, I don't think I missed a single occurrence. I was at all. Uh, probably eight of them while I was Lieutenant Governor, so I'm really proud to be here now to represent the entire state of New York and say, we need you to succeed. And as go the MWBs of the state of New York, so goes the rest of our state, and I believe in this so intrinsically. It's part of who I am, it's part of who I am as a woman and as a person who helps start woman-owned businesses. For my mother and my sister, I know the challenges that you have to endure and I also know that there are extreme disadvantages that women and minority-owned businesses encounter just getting off the ground, the access to capital, to get other people to believe in your success, to believe you can actually make an idea become a reality. And I'm so excited to be able to help you overcome those barriers. And we have a dynamic team. I'm really proud of my administration. Just over 100 days ago, we didn't have an administration. So I've been able to attract some really talented individuals to come to public service or to continue in public service. And I want to acknowledge some of them right now. And first of all, I want to do thank uh, Kathleen Trigg Jones, the founder of iWoman TV, for adding the star power to this event. Thank you for the introduction. But in the audience today, we have some incredible public servants. And I want to start with the secretary to the governor. If you do not know Karen Persicilli Keo, you need to get to know her right now. I can't see out of you. You all look kind of dark to me. But Karen, are you out there? Are you out there? 
Okay, she's not over at the bar, right? She's right there. Okay, I see Karen. Liz Fine, the special counsel to the governor. Liz, are you in the house? All right, there you are. Lisa Gutierrez, the chief diversity officer for the state of New York. Thank you for all your great service. Hope Knight, the acting, soon to be not acting anymore, president and CEO of Empire State Development, Hope Knight. <laughs> Jerome Duvall, executive VP, division of MWB Businesses. We've worked together a long time. Jerome, I want to thank you for all you do. Incredible leader. And Tracy Mitchell, who makes sure it's all done right. So make sure you make Tracy happy, uh, the director of special projects for MWBs as well. Another friend of mine is in the audience, and I want to give a special shout out to our Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Ruth Hazel Thompson, our special advisor, Homes and Community Renewal. We've worked together since 2014. We've been close partners to continue making sure that everyone has access to a wonderful home. Uh, Sandra Rivera, our Senior Advisor for Legislative Affairs as well. Many individuals were also here earlier, so let's give them a collective round of applause because they all work so incredibly hard every single day. You know, Kathleen mentioned, and you don't need a reminder, of the challenges all of you had to come through during the pandemic in particular. And I also know that Many of you subscribe to the same philosophy that I do. If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Well, you have all emerged so incredibly strong. And I had the opportunity during the pandemic to go see many of your businesses and to walk in the factory floors and the small shops across the state and just to just say, hang in there a little bit longer. I know you worked so hard to get here in the first place. So just hang on because I know better days lie ahead. And while we're not through this pandemic just yet, and I thank everyone who's doing the responsible thing, not just for themselves, but their coworkers, their customers, their friends, and their families by getting vaccinated, getting the booster shot. Please get boosted. We need that extra layer of protection. And those who are wearing the mask, I thank you. I don't take this for granted. I thank you for being so supportive of our effort to make sure that we, number one, protect the health of New Yorkers, but number two, we protect the health of our economy. We cannot sustain any more setbacks. I want to make sure we just launch into this post-pandemic world with optimism and confidence and continued support for MWBEs. So we already have 9,000 certified MWBEs in the state. I think we can do a little better than that. Should we raise that number a little bit higher? We could do more than 9,000. Let's bring more to the party. And I remember when I first started giving speeches as Lieutenant Governor, we bragged about the fact that we had $2 billion of contracts awarded to MWBs. Well, guess what? We cracked $3 billion of contracts to MWBs just in the last couple of years alone. And that's during a pandemic. And we're going to continue. We're just getting started. This morning, I was at JFK announcing that we're going to continue uh, with Terminal 1, 5,000 new jobs, 30% to MWBEs. We're going to keep that going. Same with LaGuardia Airport. Over $2 billion in contracts awarded there to MWBEs. And as you may have heard, we surpassed our nation leading goal of 30% utilization. We're at 30.5, I believe it is. Yes, we did it. We did it together. Yes. And I'm not tipping my hand here yet. We're going to go even better than that. We're going to keep that number increasing because I want to make sure that everyone understands that we have to support and give the chance for an opportunity and open the doors for so many more businesses. And that is what's going to make us the stronger state as we emerge going forth. So I want to thank everyone who's participating. I know you're in conferences and roundtables and conversations throughout the day. There are new opportunities. I know you heard from some people from our Office of Cannabis, and that's going to be a whole game changer for particularly minority communities that have suffered so much for decades of indiscriminate persecution, I'll call it. I mean, some call it prosecution. I call it persecution. And we're going to give an opportunity for so many more people to participate in this new emerging industry. So are we ready to launch into 2022 and meet new goals and exceed them? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Thank you to everyone involved. Look forward to your success. 
because your success is our success. Thank you very much.